Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's first video. We're doing the April 2020 forecast for today's first video. So we're going to have a look at the CFSB2 and Beijing Climate Centre. We'll see what those two long-range models are forecasting uh, for April. Uh, I'm going to give you guys this forecast. We're going to start off with a review of the March forecast. At the end of the video, have a little sneak peek uh, for May. So, before we get on that, they just say that coming up later on today, we're going to have the weekend forecast. So, as always, on a uh, Saturday, we've got weekend bookend coming up for you. And then, uh, after that, we'll also have a week to 10 day video update, including all of the usual features. And that'll be later on this afternoon. Uh, right, so the uh, March forecast was for uh, near normal temperatures. We thought that uh, could be a little bit on either side of average, so perhaps a little bit above or a little bit below even, uh, but uh, not a big deviation and bring to an end the run of exceptionally mild months that uh, set up through the winter. And uh, for precipitation, we thought that probably again close to average northern and western areas tend to be a little bit wetter, southern east areas tend to be a little bit drier. And one of those months that could be wetter early on and then trending drier as the month progresses. Well, this is how the uh, mean temperature anomaly looks for March 2020 at the Climate Averages page at the UK Met for this. This is how the mean temperature anomaly looks for March 2020. And uh, yes, very close to average. Uh, it's set against 81 to 2010. If we were setting this against 61 to 1990, it would be uh, a little bit milder than average, I think. But uh, set against 81 to 2010, actually, we come out very close uh, to average, which is about what was expected. It was a little bit cold average in Western Scotland, one two parts of Northern Ireland. A bit more than average parts of North I seen, but you'll see not a big deviation anywhere. Very, very close to average. We're in half a degree uh, of average through most parts of the country. So the temperature side of the forecast went very well. Precipitation wise, this is how uh, we came out. So perhaps a little bit drier than we uh, expected. So for Western Scotland, it was slightly wetter than average, but uh, Northern Ireland had a dry and average month. East of Scotland and much of Eastern England significantly dry and average with near normal rainfall elsewhere. So let's say we was average to drier than average, really, through most parts of the country. We did, though, see that scenario of the month beginning on a relatively unsettled note. So I think the early part of March was the most unsettled part of the month. And then we progressed to something uh, drier as the month went along. But that's a progression to dry weather. Um, happened a little bit earlier than we anticipated. But nevertheless, I think a, very, a fairly decent forecast from Gaz Webb is uh, for March 2020. I'm quite happy with how uh, it came out. So I think for this one, we say that it uh, was a successful uh, forecast. I don't think the spring forecast is going too bad either at the moment. Because it is early days on that. We're only in the beginning of April. So things with the spring forecast forecast could still go horribly wrong. Uh, anyway, we shall move on to April uh, now. So this is the 700 millibar height anomaly for April uh, 2020. Uh, from CFSV2, and um, rather strange looking chart this, uh, so lots of low pressure up to our north, that's all left over from the winter, of course, that's still the polar vortex of doom, um, still in business up there in the northern latitudes, if you come over here, you see all these blue colours up here, that's all left over from the polar vortex, so that's still... Uh, is going on, uh, but at an, an ever weakening sort of level. We also have some low pressure in the North Atlantic over towards uh, sort of um, Newfoundland and the eastern seaboard of America. There's a drop of low pressure through there. Uh, that's the Azores High looking displaced further south and uh, rather weakened than normal. And then there's some sort of a ridge that's extending through Central Europe towards the UK. Uh, you come over here, you can see it's extending through uh, the central parts of Europe. But it originates back to this big area of high pressure that's sort of sitting over central parts of Siberia. It's a very strange looking chart. And it is a job to work out whether we would be settled or unsettled. Um with that. So uh, you would have thought this low pressure here will probably be sending 
sort of, uh, or the trough of low pressure will probably be sending areas of low pressure into the North Atlantic. But then we've also got this ridge going on down here. It is a very strange looking chart and it's difficult to, to decipher where we would have a particularly settled or unsettled month. Now, I don't suppose it would be overly unsettled because we haven't got a trough of low pressure over top of the country. So there should be at least some dry weather on offer, let's say, through April. Uh, with that. The temperature anomaly is rather uh, cool as well. So the warmest temperature anomalies are pushed away towards Scandinavia and Baltic Sea areas and into the western part of Russia. And otherwise, just uh, near normal, really, for temperature anomalies across most parts of Europe. Ireland and the UK is included in that. Just near normal, really, with the temperature anomaly for April. It does actually look quite, uh, quite a coolish sort of month down across parts of the Mediterranean. Uh, for us in the uh, UK and Ireland, just close to average uh, with the temperature anomaly. The uh, precipitation anomaly does look quite dry, actually. Uh, so uh, the ridge doesn't look like much on a 700 millibar height anomaly, but I assume it must be a relatively strong area of high pressure that CFS is going for there because it is going for a very much drier than average month for much of England, Wales, France, Low Countries, Germany. All those sort of areas look like they're uh, significantly drier than average, presumably under an area of high pressure. Southern Europe looks wetter, Spain and Portugal wetter down there, and some southeastern parts of the Med too. And of course, it's where the jet stream is up here, affecting parts of the northwest of Scotland and also into Norway and uh, northern Sweden. So, no particular signal for temperature, but a quite a strong signal for dry of an average month in many parts of the uh, UK, particularly England and Wales, from CFS. V2. Uh, now, this is the Beijing Climate Centre 500 millibar height anomaly uh, for the 6th of April to the 5th of May. Uh, so, this one has below average height still up within the normal latitude, so that's again all left over um, from the winter and the polar vortex of doom. It has a trough of low pressure extending down from Greenland in towards Newfoundland, the eastern, eastern seaboard of America, so that. Again, it's in line. It has been reached over here across sort of Western Russia and back into Siberia, just there. Uh, for us, we're sort of in weakish type pressure. So there's a bit of a reach down here. That's the Azores high. That looks a bit weaker than normal. Low pressure is out here and probably sending some rain bands into the UK as well. But again, it is quite a difficult 500 millibar high anomaly to interpret there from the Beijing climate centre for April. Temperature anomaly with the Bay Climate Centre for April is around average to possibly slightly below, uh, especially out to west of the country. So not a particularly strong deviation either way uh, with the temperature anomaly with both of these models forecasting near normal temperatures. And precipitation anomaly with the Bay Climate Centre interestingly is a little bit wetter than um, certainly what the CFS is showing. So it's actually going for a slightly wetter than average month there for UK and Ireland and for much of northern and uh, Western Europe as well. Also going for a very wet uh, month down in the Med, Spain, Portugal, very wet. And much of the central Mediterranean just there, quite wet as well. So this is a difficult April to interpret from a model perspective. Uh, and when the models get like this and they, they get tricky to interpret, really you just have to go with what your gut feeling is telling you. And I think we're probably going to have quite a nice month. I think they're maybe a little bit too pessimistic, particularly the Beijing Climate Centre, about this April. I would suspect we're going to have more in the way of higher pressure than these models are indicating, particularly the Beijing Climate Centre. Uh, and therefore, we probably get a rather dry of an average month, uh, if anything. That's what I'd anticipate. But uh, again, we have a dry of an average month, particularly for more eastern areas. Could be more unsettled again in the north and west in this sort of pattern. But I think for the south and east, definitely there's a good chance of a dry of an average month there. And temperature-wise, I would suspect a little bit above average again. I don't think we'll have a big deviation, probably. I don't think we'll see sort of two, three degrees above average as we have back in the winter. I think that has come to uh, a halt for the time being. We never rule anything out, of course, but I think it's unlikely we get uh, an exceptionally mild or warm April. But I think, again, probably a bit above average, around half a degree or so. Probably a bigger anomaly um, above average compared to March, by the way. So this is set against 81 to 2010. So I'd say around a degree above average, something like that, uh, for uh, for April. Set against 81 to 
2010, which is quite a significant anomaly if you were to compare it to 61 to 1990. Um, so just a rather milder, warmer than average uh, month, and a little bit on the dry and average side, quite a lot of nice weather, regular sort of uh, ridges of high pressure. And, um, yes, I think we have a relatively decent month. The only question mark about this April, and it would be more particularly in the second half of the month, I suspect, is if we get a response to the sudden stratospheric warming. We know we've had this sudden stratospheric warming. Um, and there is a time lag between that taking place, the sudden stratospheric warming taking place over the Arctic, and the effects within the troposphere. If we was to start getting northern blocking setting up, and I think it would be more particularly later in the month, if that was to happen, then obviously we might start bringing in so much colder air from the north. Now, occasionally, it's only happened two or three times in the 20th century, the last week of April can deliver uh, heavy snowstorms. I would suspect that's very unlikely to happen in uh, this month, but because the sun strat effect when we happened so late, we, necess we can't necessarily totally rule out the possibility that it could get usually cold in the last week of April, or the last 10 days of April. But I think it's unlikely that that happens, and uh, even if we do get northern blocking, it would be very... Uh, you would have to prime, prime that blocking in exactly the right position to pull in uh, particularly cold uh, northerly or northeast means they would have to be northerly or northeasterly and easterly wouldn't deliver anything particularly wintry in late april so it would have to be exactly prime that blocking to pull in proper northerly or northeasterly winds from true arctic origins and that's why sort of late april snow is very rare but it has happened occasionally it happened in 1981 happened in 1908 but i think we say that's a very very low uh, risk not negligible not totally impossible uh, because of the late sun and stratospheric warming but very unlikely and i would suspect if we do get a tropospheric response via blocking we'd probably just turn cooler and wetter in the second half of april uh, but overall, not a bad month, I don't think. I think we're in for a relatively uh, nice month to follow on from what has been uh, a much better uh, March. Finally, the uh, CFSV2 for May. So it's a little sneak peek at uh, May 700 millibar high anomaly. If anyone wants to set up high pressure over Scandinavia, which is very typical uh, for May. Uh, May is our most easterly month of the year on average. So it's setting up a Scandinavian high, which would draw in easterly winds. Um, and that's one of those charts that could go either way. That could be a very nice month. You could have a lot of dry weather with uh, easterly winds bringing in quite warmish conditions from the east. Alternatively, you could get low pressure setting up underneath the high uh, in this sort of area. Then it can actually turn into quite an unpleasant month. It can turn into quite a cool and wet month with easterly winds dragging in lots of cloud from the east and low pressure providing rain. It can also be a little bit thundery. Uh, as well, but that's very typical uh, for May. May is our most easterly month. Um, if we was to get the number of Scandinavian highs and easterly winds in January, as we get in May, then um, cold and snow lovers would have nothing to worry about because, uh, of course, by the time you get through to May, it's far too late to be bringing anything cold in from the east, although the eastern coastal areas can feel a bit chilly due to the onshore wind off the North Sea. But um, very typical that you get Eastleys and Scandinavian highs in May. The CFS is going for a classic uh, sort of uh, May scenario there. Uh, but we'll worry about May when we get to it. Uh, coming back to April, so because of his April 2020 month air forecast is for slightly milder than average, around a degree above 81 to 2010, so uh, a bit of a milder than average month. And uh, for precipitation, probably dry than average in the south and east, wetter than average in the north and west. Not too bad a month, uh, uh, a month at all. There could be a cold snap sometime through the middle or latter stages of the month after the sudden stratospheric warming. Um, but it's more likely just to turn cool and wetter if, uh, if that happens. We shall see how it goes, and uh, we shall review the April forecast when we do May's forecast at the beginning of next month. Come back later on for the uh, weekend forecast and uh, also week 10-day video update. They'll be up later on. Uh, that's all for now, though, and thanks for watching.